Speaking of redlining, next question. Mm-hmm. Please discuss how discipline equals freedom can and should apply to one's financial life. Thanks. From all us, <laughs> Uh Obviously, if you want to be financially free, you got to have financial discipline. That's just the way it is. So here's, it's, it's just simple, not easy. Save your money. Boom. Yeah. That's number one. Don't buy an, ex- here's one. Don't buy an expensive car until you own a piece of property. That's just a basic rule. Interesting. Yep. If you're driving a Mercedes um, S Class from 2015. Is that a good one? The S? It's, it's a very good one. Yeah. It's a very good one. But it's also $120,000. Mm. But if you're living, if you're renting, the wrong move. Mm. Sell that thing and buy a piece of property. A car is a depreciating asset. A property is a property is an appreciating asset. Try and put your money into your appreciating assets. Spend less than you earn. Boom. Stay off the credit cards. Boom. Invest your money in something. I like to invest money in me. <laughs> in things that I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I, I, I want to invest money in things that I know and understand and what better do I know and understand than, than things that I'm doing for yeah. people that I know or things that I'm involved with. Yeah. So that's what you got to do. You want to you get your money taken care of. You want to you wanna have financial freedom. You got to just have the financial discipline. That's, that's all there is to it. And work hard. You know, work hard. Make things happen. But your, your major gains... You know, most people don't become rich by their salary, right? They become, they, be, they, they earn their wealth, they gain their wealth through bigger things like buying properties. You know, we got a jiu-jitsu player at the, at the academy, a girl, and, you know, a year ago, she was kind of talking to me about, oh, well, you know, you know, she just got married and blah, 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 and we started talking. I said, you, you, you know, she said, well, the thing about moving, I got this condo. And I was like, we started talking about buying properties and boom, she disclosed on a, like a four, four unit property in San Diego. And the day she got the keys, she was making $400 a month. She went from paying $1,900 a month in mortgage. The day she made she got the keys all of a sudden that she rented that place out she's got three units she's living in the crappiest unit and she's got those things rented out and now she's making four hundred dollars a month so that's a that's a delta of what twenty three hundred dollars a month in the black yep that's impressive yeah and it took her a year to get done but she did it and now i said she's like i'm so happy i'm like that's cool start saving Start saving for your next property. Yeah. I'm like, the market's going to take a downturn. You got to be ready. If it doesn't, if it does, but you got to be ready to make that next move. So start mm-hmm. saving your money. Start paying that thing down. Start saving your money. Start saving that next down payment. That's where your wealth gets established is in these long-term strategic moves that you make. And you know, I'm no financial expert, but you don't have to be a financial expert to know to save your money, to spend less than you earn. Um, and, and property to me is a good thing to invest in. It does go up and down. You know, and there's a lot of people that got crushed in the in the market downturn in 2007 and 2008. And I was in the military, so I was buying houses, and I didn't even know that the market downturned. It didn't matter to me because I had a steady job, and I just bought those properties just to just to have properties. I wasn't buying them to flip them and sell them and all that. No, I was just like, okay, in some some time in the future, somebody's gonna be paying me rent, and it's gonna go in my pocket. And that yeah. sounds like a good plan to me because <laughs> yeah. they're not making any more real estate by the beach, right? Mm. Um, so if, so yeah. I'm not a financial genius. Talk to somebody that is smart. Talk to somebody that understands finances. But save your money. Spend less than you earn. Don't be renting. If don't be renting a place if you're buying out buying a Mercedes S Class right. or a Seven Series or a Range Rover. Yeah. Buy a little piece of property. Buy a little thing. Yep. Buy a little thing. Don't don't just just go buy that little something. Get in there. Get yeah. it started. Yeah, man. I like this. Invest in yourself. Yeah. Because, and invest in yourself, yeah, that's a, such a broad term, right? Mm-hmm. It's such a, and actually it's kind of started to become like a little, like a cliche catchphrase, invest mm-hmm. in yourself. But if you really think about that, 
you yeah you invest in yourself you don't go buy you know so, uh, i used to work in the nightclub industry mm -hmm. right so i'm and i'm now i'm looking with my mindset now looking back at the people i used to deal with mm -hmm. i used to people see people come in there every weekend and spend a lot of money i don't know maybe mm -hmm. some of them are already are rich or, or but i know that if that's what you're spending your money on you're going out and essentially just buying drinks mm -hmm. and buying <laughs> nightclub yes there's no essential you know, that's what you're doing yeah you're, th you're throwing thinking back like thinking back five years ago you spent all your money not all your money but you spent yeah. a bunch of money on yeah. drinks and what you have literally nothing to show for it and in most cases you there's it's going to mess you up in in one way yeah you can do something you regret or whatever potentially so think of that same five years and be like dang what if i started these two things that in my you know, prediction is going to help me in five mm -hmm. years. And let's say you did that five years ago and you did it, I don't know, you even practice it like an hour a day, whatever it is, even just improving your knowledge on the economy or something. I don't know, anything, anything that improves your knowledge. Five years later, you could, you could be essentially an expert at it. Absolutely. So now, now just consider now, what is it that you should have got into? Because you probably have a handful of interests mm -hmm. that are pretty cool to you. Even if it's like playing guitar, I don't know, whatever. But if you can make it something that you can anticipate in five years, it's going to be, you're, if you're talking about financial stuff, it's going to help you make money. Mm. Then do, do, do that. It. Do that yeah. thing. Don't. And I, I, I harp on reality TV a lot, but I think it kind of deserves it because you don't learn much reality TV, yet you lost like that hour. Mm -hmm. And if you spent that hour... And really, you could kind of even keep watching reality TV if you want, but just spend that one hour doing something that you anticipate. If you're really good at, it would help you financially. Do that thing for one hour, and then I like it. One day is gonna come. You're gonna think back. Oh, just the same way I'm thinking back of the five years ago. I mean, in my case, it's more than five years ago, but just the same way I'm thinking back of those people at the nightclub industry. The same way I'm thinking back about that. You're going to be thinking back at yourself and you'll be like, dang, I'm so happy I got into that, you know? Yeah. And there's all kinds of things you could have done. I mean, I look at the money I wasted over the years in the bars. It's ridiculous. You know, yep. being a young seal out getting after it with the boys Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the Sunday. That's yep. how we used to roll. Yeah. That's how we used to roll. And it was just, hey. We'd show up. I'm the richest guy in the world. Yeah. I have all the money that I ever need and I can buy whatever I want. That's what yeah. every night was like. Yeah. So not wise. Don't do that. Yeah. And I'll even, I'll even go out, concede, have some fun. It's cool. You can still kind right. of do I'm just saying, think of that. Yeah. Think of what you're doing right now. And you're, because for these people and for these people I was talking about back when I used to work in the nightclub industry, they are really, technically, they are committed to spending their money. Committed to it. Yeah. If you're doing something to every single week for years, you're committed to it. So just take one of those hours. Yeah. Or take maybe 10% of that money that you're spending or 25%, all of it, whatever, and put it in something that you anticipate. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, I mean, invest in yourself is like actually build something, actually build a little company, you know, make something. That's what, that, that's what I was meant. You've got another perspective, which is also very viable and makes just as much sense. I was literally talking about you know, from your perspective, oh, you like guitars? Cool. Figure out how to make a cool guitar stand at your house, you know, and then see if you can get that thing produced. And then, oh, it's really good. Maybe we start running production. Let's do that. That is infinitely, not only, not only will you possibly end up with a, some kind of a product that sells, mm -hmm. but you'll have learned something. You've had fun. You created something for the world. You've, you've learned the lessons that you learned about building it and getting after that. That's all going to be worthwhile as well. Yep. So there's no, this, this, I'm not saying this, um, with regards to that, you're going to come up with this product and you're going to get rich. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But can you use that to build knowledge? Can you use that to get, gain experience that will then compound with other things in your life and eventually make you financially free because you had that discipline? Absolutely. Answers, yes. 